And the other day I hit 100,000 subscribers. Yay! <laughs> I am so inspired by you guys every week. So to thank you, I thought I'd answer some of your questions. Okay, a bunch of you wanted to know what grosses me out the most. And the answer is really kind of strange and dumb. It's old milk, like milk that has like solid bits floating in it. It's super weird because, you know, I can look at a picture of like an open wound that's leaking pus, but somehow the idea of lumpy milk just makes me want to dry heave. Okay, next question. Awesome Stuff Collector on Tumblr asked, how did you choose to have a career in science? So I've talked a bit about this in a previous video and I'll include a link to that, but I figured I could use this opportunity to tell you a bit about how I got into science journalism. Now, I didn't actually realize that science journalism was a career you could have for the longest time. But when I was working in a lab after college, I was reading and watching and listening to all this science-focused media. So one day I wrote to this blogger who I really liked and I asked her how to become, I think I said a science advocate. Like I didn't even know what her job title actually was. Anyway, amazingly, she wrote back and she told me that she was a science communicator and that you can actually go to graduate school for that. Who knew? So I applied and I got in. That woman probably doesn't even remember writing to me, but I am still so grateful. Now, you don't need to go to graduate school to be a science communicator. I personally found it helpful because I was transitioning careers, but if you can get your work out there on your own, then go for it. You could start by writing or making videos for a school publication, and it's also never been easier to self-publish. Platforms like YouTube or Medium or a personal blog are great places to start if you want to build up your portfolio. And who knows, they might take off, but that shouldn't be your get-rich-quick scheme. So while you're self-publishing, I'd encourage you to reach out to publications or shows that you love and see if they take pitches. The important thing to remember, though, is whether you're posting photo essays on Instagram or writing for a major journalism outlet, accuracy and integrity are key. Your work is going to educate people. So educate yourself on how to fact check and avoid plagiarism and copyright infringement. And if you mess up, cop to it. A few weeks ago, there was an error in one of my videos, and luckily, one of you pointed it out pretty quickly. So I took down the video, fixed the error, and posted a corrected version with an explanation of what happened in the description. Listen, no one is perfect, but we should all try our best. Okay, I rambled on for a long time with that one. So next question. Fulia Julia on Tumblr asked, have you ever received a largely negative response to a video? And if so, how did or would you respond? So I haven't received a hugely negative response to a video yet, though I don't doubt that it may happen at some point in the future. I did get some flack in my period video for referring to people who get periods mostly as women, even though there are lots of trans and gender non-conforming people who get their periods too. And that was a good call. I tried adding an annotation to correct myself and also included a card to a video of a trans person talking about their first experience with their period, um, but you know, that's not really good enough, and in the future, I will definitely be better. Anyway, for the most part, the critiques I've gotten from you guys have been really helpful, and you know, the show's a work in progress, so I'm always trying to improve it. Finally, I'm going to do a lightning round of questions from Ms. Sarkar's seventh grade science classes in Newton, Massachusetts, because they asked a bunch of great ones. Okay, question one. Where did you go to college and what did you study? I studied biology at Brown University and then I went to graduate school for science journalism at NYU. Question two, who was your inspiration growing up? Well, I have five, my mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, and David Attenborough, the natural history presenter. So I didn't realize that what David Attenborough was doing was science communication and that that was a career I could aspire to have, but I did know that David Attenborough was one of the first public figures I saw who had a love of science. Question three, do spiders crawl into people's mouths when they sleep? Well, if that happens, it is definitely pretty rare. Spiders probably want nothing to do with your mouth. Question four. If you sneeze with your eyes open, will they fall out? Nope, you have muscles in your eyes that keep your eyeballs in place. Plus, there are actually people out there who can sneeze with their eyes open. Question five. Have you ever encountered a house centipede? 
Yes, I have. I actually saw one in my basement a few months ago. And those things are like aliens. The way they move is super freaky. But I'd actually love to do an episode on them sometime soon, so stay tuned. Anyway, that's it for this question time. But I have to say that some of my favorite videos have come from your questions and comments. So please keep it up. Thank you for everything you do. Ew. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have a question for me, leave it in the comments. And for more gross science, hit subscribe.